As far as legendary heroes go, Wolverine's name might just be at the top of a few lists that talk about mutants and superheroes in the Marvel Universe. Known for his adamantium claws and fighting spirit, Wolverine has endless lore in the Marvel comics, and he has also inspired several live-action movies and animated series. While his claws are one of his best features, there isn't much that we know about them except for the fact that he got them while working with Weapon X. Today, we'll delve into the details behind his insane physiological addition, and tell you everything about the hidden mechanism behind Wolverine's claws. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Origins of Wolverine's Claws Wolverine first debuted on the big screen in the 2000s X-Men movie, where a major part of his story arc revolved around his inability to remember anything from his past life. He seemed to have no recollection of the process that helped him gain these sharp claws, and he later worked alongside Professor Xavier to jog his memories, but with very little success. Eventually, the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie in 2009 provided us with the backstory behind the man and shed light on his origins and claws. As it turns out, Wolverine's mutation had resulted in him growing some claws after he witnessed his supposed father's death, which was quite a shocking incident for him. The man who killed his father then revealed himself to be Wolverine's birth father, and all the trauma triggered his mutation and led him to grow a bunch of claws. As these bone fragments protruded from within his skin, Wolverine killed his birth father in a fit of rage and made a life of his own until he eventually broke these claws in an intense fight with his brother Sabretooth about two decades later. Soon enough, Major William Stryker saw this as his chance to swoop in and convince Logan to join his experimentations by offering to fix his claws. Stryker presented his experiment as a chance for Logan to turn into an ultimate weapon, which would enable him to defeat his brother with great ease once and for all. Logan was quite tempted by this offer, and he agreed to undergo this process where his bones were injected with adamantium to turn him into Weapon X. While this is the origin story that has stuck around, Logan's claws were initially supposed to be part of his gloves. This was revealed by Wolverine co-creator, Len Wein, and we can also spot these gloves in the first comic book appearance in the 1974 Incredible Hulk comics. These claw gloves could essentially power anybody who got their hands on them, but Chris Claremont soon took over the character's design and redid the claws in the Uncanny X-Men comics in 1975 so that they would be a part of Wolverine's body. In current times, the story remains that the claws are part of his mutated bone structure, and that they were tweaked when Stryker experimented on Logan's body to lace his bones with adamantium. This experimental procedure was quite fascinating, and let us now have a look at it in detail. Wolverine's Adamantium Bonding Process, as explored in the Weapon X comics. Wolverine's exposure to the adamantium was explored in great detail in the Weapon X comics in 1993, wherein he was greatly weakened when he was first discovered by the Professor and Dr. Abraham Cornelius. While the Professor, also known as Professor Thornton, was the one to first design the Weapon Plus program that gave away to the Weapon X program, Dr. Cornelius aided him in his experimentations. Cornelius was tasked with the responsibility of perfecting a way to lace human bones with adamantium, and his thirst for scientific progress drove him down an unethical path wherein he ended up testing his experimentations on human bodies. After getting some of their agents to capture Wolverine to be their first test subject, they ran a trial experiment X by initiating the process of grafting adamantium onto his bones. Wolverine spent the initial stages of the experiment in great pain, and the team of researchers then figured out a way to project his thoughts onto a screen so that they could study him. As the pain intensified, Wolverine kept having flashes of his fights with Sabretooth, among other things, and the researchers continued to study them while also keeping a strict eye on the pipes and tubes that were going in and out of his system. As time passed, the team took it upon themselves to shave his facial hair and keep him strapped into place as he started showing some resistance. While Dr. Cornelius updated the professor on the experiment status, he was warned against causing any harm to Wolverine's body. In the final stages of the experiment, Wolverine was nearly unrecognizable as they submerged him in a tank, kickstarted the adamantium breakdown process, and checked their readings to realize that his cardio attack was higher than expected. These results indicated some damage to his body, and Dr. Cornelius now started stressing out about what would happen when this news reached the professor. As the procedure intensified, the suffusion rates and the pheno B levels remained steady, but the cardio attack continued to be an issue of concern despite Wolverine's incredible stamina. 
Just when things started to look bleak, the researchers reassured Cornelius that Wolverine would certainly survive this, and that his autonomic nervous system was going strong even when he was unconscious. In fact, Wolverine's body showed great resistance in the final stages of the experiment, and his enhanced heartbeat started draining the adamantium reservoirs. In an attempt to fix the issue, one of Cornelius' colleagues named Dr. Hines glanced at his previous medical records, but even she was at a loss for how to fix the process without any precedent. Finally, they decided to pump norepinephrine into his system, along with adamantium when Cornelius realized that he was a mutant, and this experiment might fall apart as it was designed to bring about a change in human physiology. Just as Cornelius processed this information, Wolverine woke up from his extended slumber and fixated on his hands while the researchers rushed to observe him. In a matter of seconds, his skin started tearing apart as blood spurted out of his hands, and he writhed in pain. Since the researchers had no clue how to help him, they merely stood there and observed as Wolverine braved the pain while the adamantium lace claws shot out of his fingers. Anatomy of the Claws, delving into the functionality of these inbuilt weapons. In the comics, Wolverine's retractable claws are placed within his forearms, and they typically emerge from the skin between his knuckles upon activation. He had a total of six retractable claws that were about a foot long, and they were equally distributed between both his arms. There have been numerous artists who have worked on this character design over the years, resulting in different presentations of his claws and their respective placement and mechanisms. However, they all follow some common themes, such as the claws ability to remain stored within his forearms in a retracted form. These claws only extend when Wolverine activates his healing factor to tear the skin and muscle tissue around his knuckles, allowing the claws to emerge from within. Fans have also wondered whether Wolverine's bent wrists would prevent his claws from unsheathing or if they would slash their way through his wrists without regard for the harm it might cause him. Well, this question was answered in the Wolverine comics, wherein we can see his claws sheathing and erupting out with a splash of blood, even if it meant injuring his wrists. In fact, Marvel has also commented on the matter by stating that Wolverine must keep his wrists erect while extending his claws so that these claws can move all the way from his forearms to emerge straight between his knuckles without causing any harm to his wrists. The only plausible way to prevent his claws from coming out is by breaking his forearm tendons, as this would bring a halt to the claws' mechanisms. Of course, this could only be done temporarily, as Wolverine's regenerative healing factor would heal the tendon injury in no time. Durability and sharpness. How lethal were these claws against vibranium or other such substances? Laced with adamantium, these retractable claws were capable of cutting through flesh and almost any material even before Wolverine underwent the experiment process. After being grafted with adamantium, these claws become virtually indestructible and could pierce through nearly every surface imaginable. Marvel has often sparked competition between adamantium-charged claws and vibranium weapons, but adamantium has managed to defeat the latter in most face-offs. However, the MCU has a different view, and it maintains that vibranium is the stronger and more versatile substance of the two. While adamantium has mostly been used to enhance the physical structure of characters such as Wolverine, vibranium has been deployed to craft advanced weapons and gadgets in Wakanda and Talokan. It has also displayed the ability to contain the power of an Infinity Stone within Vision's body, and it does make sense why Vibranium is held in such high regard in the cinematic universe. However, this does not answer the question of whether it's actually stronger than Adamantium, even though it was the first choice of metal that was used in the Weapon X program. Unfortunately, Vibranium was not dense enough to be used in the experiment, and once again, Adamantium emerged on top and proved to be the correct material for the process. This establishes Adamantium's superiority over Vibranium and in the right circumstances, adamantium can certainly cut through vibranium. In fact, there have been instances where Wolverine upgraded his claws to be hot claws, which could heat up to thousands of degrees and then cut through vibranium as if it were a piece of cake. However, there has been no direct contact between Wolverine's adamantium laced claws and a potent vibranium weapon such as Captain America's shield, and maybe we can hope for a face-off in the future to settle this debate. There have also been discussions on whether an Uru skeleton would be more durable than an adamantium one, since Wolverine once got Uru armor. While Uru would ensure a lighter skeleton with little to no poisoning, it is quite a magical metal, and Wolverine has only been lucky enough to gain access to it during one singular story arc. The Healing Factor Connection How are Wolverine's mutant abilities linked to one another? While Wolverine's healing factor and super strength seem to be enough of a gift, some fans wonder whether he even needs these claws. A fan theory suggested that Wolverine possesses these claws and accelerated healing due to his mutation that combined his DNA with Wolverine DNA, which are wild creatures known for their healing. 
While Wolverine's character may be inspired by these resilient animals, this cannot be the only justification behind him having two specialized properties. As we delve into this in a more scientific manner, a logical explanation is that Wolverine's enhanced healing factor is a byproduct of his adamantium lace claws. While these claws are stored around his forearms, they emerge at the tip of his hands through the skin between the knuckles. This means that Wolverine's skin tears every single time his claws extract or retract, and his healing factor serves as a blessing in these situations, where he needs his skin tears to heal in a short amount of time. Combat Utility all the ways in which these claws aid Wolverine in a face-off. Wolverine's adamantium claws can truly amplify his blows to a great extent and leave his opponents gravely injured as compared to a regular punch to the face. Moreover, he's also known for his signature move known as the Fastball Special, wherein the other X-Men launch him into the air so he can strike down their opponents with amplified impact. Wolverine has also undergone several upgrades to keep his claws in good shape, and once he even got Hot Claws in the Return of Wolverine comics. These claws had the ability to superheat in cases when he felt extreme rage, and they could then easily slash through metal such as vibranium or even thermokinetic materials. In its regular form, adamantium was incapable of slicing through these metals, but the supercharged claws could heat up to several thousand degrees in a moment's time, and then easily cut through any surface imaginable. Since these hot claws were linked to Wolverine's rage, there's no limit to how hot they can get, but so far, they've managed to heat up to a point where they ignited gasoline by just getting in contact with it. Wolverine was once even bestowed with Asgardian Magical Claws, which enabled him to put up a good fight against a mystical being known as Kull. Marvelous Verdict To sum things up, Wolverine's claws certainly provide him with a much needed edge against his opponents and fellow X-Men members alike. It's nearly impossible to talk about Wolverine without bringing up his adamantium laced claws, and they have rightfully become the most recognizable feature. While he may have gained them under tragic circumstances, these claws have shaped his identity, and we hope you enjoyed delving into their hidden mechanisms with us. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!